Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. Uh, my name is Jessica. I'm the arborist at k and Greenhouse, and I'm going through the new woody plant series for 2021. Today I'll be going over our new fruits for this year. Uh, the first one we're getting in is raspberry suri, I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, we're getting this one right away in the spring um, when we open in mid-April. The best location for it is full sun. It's very tolerant of all sorts of different uh, soil types, so you don't have to worry if you have sand or clay. It'll it'll grow in both of them. Uh, this one is the summer bearing, not the ever bearing type, and it's an improvement of the raspberry boin. Um, it has better spider mite resistance than boin does. It's slightly sweeter and a slightly softer raspberry fruit. Um, it's very cold tolerant to zone two, um, so definitely okay here in the Madison area. And as with most raspberries, it is a self-pollinating plant, so you do not need another pollinator in order to get the, the fruits on this raspberry plant. Um, a new cherry that we have coming this year is called Black Tatarian. Um, it's a sweet cherry, which are a little bit harder to grow here in Wisconsin, unless you're up in uh, Door County. Um, this one is going to be arriving in early to mid-June in our nursery yard. Um, full sun is best. Actually, full sun is best for pretty much all fruits in order to get them to flower um, and, and bear fruit properly. Um, the black tatarian cherry will get white flowers in spring, typically right around Mother's Day. Um, and then the dark purple fruit that you see here in the slide um, is the edible fruit that that ripens in midsummer. So typically in July, um, as with most cherries, you'll need to put some sort of netting around it, um, some way to keep the birds from eating the cherries. Otherwise, if you just leave it unattended um, and you don't, you kind of miss the window of when the, the cherries get ripe, the birds will pick your tree pretty much clean. Um, and they think it's a free buffet for them. This one is hardy to zone five. So like I said, sweet cherries are a little bit um, more tricky to grow here in Wisconsin. Um, the fruit trees that we're getting in this year are all semi-dwarf. So that means they'll be about 12 to 15 feet tall um, and typically eight to 10 feet wide or so, sometimes 12 feet wide, um, depending on the, on the plant. Um, this one does need a different pollinator. So you can't get the same you can't have two black tatarians to pollinate each other. You'll need one black tatarian and then something like a Rainier or um, possibly a Bing cherry. Those would pollinate this, this cherry tree. Um, this cherry is called North Star. Uh, it'll arrive hopefully right before Mother's Day in early May for us. Again, full sun is best um, to get it to bear fruit um, pretty heavily for you. Um, you can see the bright red cherries here. Uh, it's a tart cherry, so it's a little bit hardier. Typically, um, the tart cherries are zone four, so they're a little bit easier to grow here in Wisconsin. Um, this one is a nice one because it actually is a um, self-pollinating cherry tree, uh, so it does not actually need another cherry in order to uh, bear the fruit. And the other self-pollinating cherry is this Montmorency cherry tree that we'll be getting in as well. Um, again, it's arriving in early May. Um, full sun is best, and this you can see they're a little bit smaller cherries than the North Star, uh, but there's also more of them um, than, than the North Star has. Um, again, like I said, it's a self-pollinating cherry tree, so you do not need another pollinator if you don't have room for it or you just don't want another cherry tree on your property. Um, hardy to zone four, as all tart cherries typically are here in Wisconsin. Um, and that's actually all of the new fruit that I have coming in, but I did want to take a little bit of time to go over the pollinating rules for fruit because it's somewhat confusing. Um, here's a list of all of the self-fruitful or self-pollinating fruits. So basically all of the, the small berries like blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, um, the currants and the grapes that we're getting in will be self-pollinating. Um, we have Reliance and Contender Peach trees coming this year, so they will also be self-pollinating. Um, and then there's one plum tree called Toka that is self-pollinating, with a little caveat that I'll get to a little bit later. Um, the Lapin and the Sweet Cherry Pie Sweet Cherries are self-pollinating, 
and the, like I just said, the North Star and the Montmorency tart cherry trees are also self-pollinating. Um, with the little note that if you do plant another cherry tree by the self-pollinating ones, they will bear a little bit heavier um, and possibly even a little bit sooner in their lifespan. For the apple trees, we, we're getting in these five types um, and here are the um, pollinators that are needed. So apples are a little bit pickier in that you can't just put any apple tree next to it. It really depends on the bloom time. Um, and basically I've been told that all apple trees are pollinated by a white crab apple tree. <laughs> if you don't have a crab apple tree by it, it'll be pollinated by this list of, of the other apple trees. Um, so the plums that we're getting in are the superior and toka. And like I said, the toka is technically self-pollinating. It will produce more if pollinated by the superior plum and the superior does need the toka in order to um, bear fruit. And for the pear that we're getting in this year, um, basically it looks almost like you can get just about any two pear trees and they'll kind of pollinate each other. Um, I'm sorry, we're getting these five, <laughs> my bad. Uh, the Bartlett is probably the least hardy of all of them, but it's probably the most well-known. It's a zone five, whereas all the rest of these are hardy to a zone four. Um, so that is all I have for you for information on the fruits. Uh, we're, like I said, we're getting a, a bunch of fruits in this year. I tried to get as many as I could. We're growing some bare root ourselves, and then uh, we're getting some in from Bailey's Nurseries and uh, a garden center up um, up near Rhinelander area too. So those should be plenty hardy as well. If you do have any questions, feel free to email us kandagreenhouse at gmail.com. Uh, phone numbers are listed here for you if you have any questions for us and just want to chat over the phone. Um, we're right now there typically between, I'd say 9.30 and 5 most, most weekdays. Um, so you can give us a call and uh, if we're not there, we'll just give you a call back. We're planning on opening on April 16th this year in 2021. So uh, we hope to see you soon. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions, just give us a shout. We're happy to uh, answer any questions you have.